let's take a closer look at a simplified way for you to remember AV blocks. We will be focusing on high yield ECGs, mnemonics to help improve retention, trends, and high yield associations. Before we look at the AV blocks, let's first look at a normal ECG. So on a normal ECG, you will see a P wave followed by a QRS complex, and then finally a T wave. The P wave represents atrial depolarization, while the QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. The key aspect of an ECG that we must know to understand AV blocks is the PR interval. The PR interval is the time from the onset of the P wave to the start of the QRS complex. This PR interval reflects conduction through the AV node. And an AV block is a slowed or blocked conduction between the atria and the ventricle. So in an AV block, you would expect to see a prolonged PR interval. But what exactly is a prolonged PR interval? A prolonged PR interval is greater than 200 milliseconds or greater than five small boxes. So in this picture here, you can see that one small box is 40 milliseconds. However, one large box, which has five small boxes, is 200 milliseconds. So if you see an ECG with a PR interval that is greater than five small boxes or greater than one large box, then you should highly, highly, highly suspect an AV block. Now that we understand the basic concepts of an AV block, let's take a closer look at the different types of AV block. The first one, of course, is first degree AV block. In a first degree AV block, you will have a prolonged PR interval. And remember, a prolonged PR interval is one which is greater than 200 milliseconds. This is equivalent to more than five small boxes or more than one large box. So if you look at that red cursor there with the heart, you can see that it is greater than one large box. So this is a prolonged PR interval. Not only is the PR interval prolonged in first degree AV block, but the PR interval is also constant. So let's say that the PR interval is 280 milliseconds. Every PR interval will be 280 milliseconds in a first degree AV block. So it is prolonged and constant. An extremely high yield but simple thing to note is that the first degree AV block typically is asymptomatic and does not require any treatment. So if you see an ECG and it is a first degree block, and then for the answer choices, you see options such as no treatment needed or asymptomatic, then take a closer look at those options because more than likely that would be the answer for a first degree AV block. Now let's take a closer look at second degree AV block. There are two types of second degree AV block, Mobitz type one and Mobitz type two. Of course, we'll be focusing on Mobitz type 1 first. So Mobitz type 1 is also called a wanky Bax block, right? So in this AV block, you'll be having progressively longer PR intervals and then a dropped beat. So if you take a closer look at the PR intervals highlighted in blue, yellow, and purple, you can see that they get progressively longer and then there is a dropped beat afterwards. So longer, longer drop, this is a wanky back. Longer, longer drop, this is a wanky back. For Mobitz type one or wanky back, they also are typically asymptomatic and do not require treatment. 
Now let's look at Mobitz type 2. In Mobitz type 2, there is no progressive prolongation of the PR interval. There is just a sudden dropped beat. The constant PR intervals are highlighted in blue. And how you can remember this is no wanky back, no warning. No wanky back, no warning. So that means that there is no warning for the dropped beat. But in Mobitz type 1, which is called wanky back, wanky back, warning. So wanky back, there is a warning of the drop beat because the PR interval gets progressively longer. But for Mobitz type 2, it's no wanky back, so there is no warning. Finally, let's look at third degree AV block. In third degree AV block, there is complete disassociation between the atria and the ventricles. So the P's and Q's don't agree in the third degree. At this stage, there is a complete block between the atria and the ventricles. So on ECG, what you will find is that there will still be constant RR intervals. And you can see that by the blue brackets. So that is a constant RR interval. You'll also see constant PP intervals as well. Another key finding is the junctional escape beats that are identified by the black arrows. So let's take a closer look at the high yield trends for AV blocks. For first degree and second degree Mobitz type 1 AV blocks, they are typically asymptomatic, they don't require any treatment or a pacemaker, and their PR intervals are prolonged, which is greater than 200 milliseconds, or greater than 5 small boxes, or greater than 1 large box. However, for Mobitz type 2 and for third degree AV blocks, they typically do have symptoms, they do require treatment or even a pacemaker, and they both have dropped beats. Just remember that the main way to differentiate between Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2 is that Mobitz type 1 is also called wanky back. So for wanky back, there is a warning. So the PR interval get progressively longer and then there is a dropped beat. However, for Mobitz type 2, the PR interval is the same and then there is a sudden drop beat. There's no warning whatsoever. So I've mentioned no symptoms versus symptoms a lot, but what clinical features can you actually see in these patients? Well, they can have a bradycardia because remember that there is an issue with the AV conduction system. So this bradycardia leads to a decreased cardiac output. This decreased cardiac output can lead to symptoms or signs such as fatigue, dizziness, and syncope. That is also one way that you can distinguish a third degree heart block. Because like I said, those patients will be symptomatic. So in that case, you will see the regular P to P intervals, the regular RR intervals, and there will be no association between the atria and the ventricles. But the clinical vignette will also describe a patient that has um, weakness, dizziness, fatigue, and even syncope. So what are the causes of AV blocks? Well, for first degree AV block, this can be due to medications such as beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers. And it can also be seen in athletes. So if you see a clinical vignette with a patient that is just coming to do a routine checkup, they are an athlete and they did an ECG, and that revealed a constant prolonged PR interval, they have no symptoms, and they ask, hey, what should we do to treat this patient? In that case, no treatment is needed. And second degree AV block also has similar causes. So some other causes of AV block include Lyme disease or congenital AV blocks. Now let's do a rapid review of everything else that you need to know about AV blocks.
What vessel is most likely affected in patients with new heart block post myocardial infarction? Right coronary artery. So remember that if you see an ECG with inferior leads in 2, 3, and AVF, this is due to an infarction in the right coronary artery. And these patients can also present with bradycardia as well. And if you are liking this video so far, please be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell so that you never miss another video like this. Which heart blocks require a pacemaker? Second degree AV block, Mobitz type 2, and third degree AV block. What is the most likely cause of third degree heart block in a neonate? Neonatal lupus. What is the treatment of choice in an avid hiker that presents with right ear hyperacusis, right nasolabial fold flattening, and an abnormal ECG? Ceftriaxone. So this is presenting the case of a hiker that has symptoms or signs of Bell's palsy and also has an abnormal ECG. So this abnormal ECG finding is more than likely heart block, which is typically seen in Lyme carditis. And to treat Lyme carditis, you treat with antibiotics, typically ceftriaxone. What is the acute management of a decompensated patient with AV block? Transcutaneous or transvenous pacing and atropine. So remember that atropine can also be used to treat bradyarrhythmias and organophosphate toxicity. So we already discussed the possible clinical features of bradyarrhythmias, but for organophosphate toxicity, remember that these patients typically present with excessive secretions, like with saliva, tears, just everything. Like every secretion you can think of is excessive. What drugs may cause an AV block? Beta blockers, non-DHP calcium channel blockers, such as verapamil and digoxin.